Hello, and welcome back to the Balance One Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm your host, Jordan Younger, and today we have a very fun guest, as promised, Chelsea Jade Curtis. You probably know her from her wildly successful podcast, the What We Said podcast that she co-hosts with her friend, JC Marie Smith, who has also been on this podcast earlier this year. Was that earlier this year or was that last year already? Oh my gosh, I just checked and that was last year. JC was on episode 202 on September 23rd, 2020, which is crazy because the day that I'm recording this intro is September 22nd, 2021, the day before Libra season, which you guys know I feel very passionately about, but just how crazy that that episode with JC came out a year ago. And since then, I've listened a lot to JC and Chelsea's podcast, the What We Said podcast. And when Chelsea announced her pregnancy earlier this summer, I got so excited because I realized that we are due about a week apart. And I would have been excited for her regardless. But it's so fun to meet like-minded people who are on this journey, who are becoming moms for the first time. We're both having boys kind of on that cusp of maybe they'll be Sagittarius's, maybe they'll be Capricorns, maybe they'll be Christmas. Christmas babies. Maybe they'll be born early. Who the heck knows? But I also feel so tied and so similar to Chelsea in so many ways because we also have many other similarities. She is a health coach. She's plant-based and she's having a plant-based pregnancy like myself, which we've talked a lot about on this podcast. She's a podcaster. She's open. She's honest. She's fun to listen to. And I've been so excited to meet her. So having her over for this conversation was so fun. She also recently moved to Orange County. If you follow her, you probably know that. So she came over. We got to do this in person. And I have to say, in-person podcasts just have so much more magic. They really do. And we talked about all sorts of things. So if you're not interested in the pregnancy content, which honestly, even before I was pregnant, I was so interested in pregnancy conversations. But if you're not, that's also totally fine. We talked about so many things. We talked a little bit about pregnancy in the beginning. We came back around to it at the end. But we also talk about Chelsea's journey to becoming a podcaster. We talk about her experience with an eating disorder in college and what led her to becoming interested in health. We talk about confidence and specifically how to cultivate self-confidence and just be okay with putting yourself out there on the internet, which is not always easy. We talk about her childhood, family, all sorts of amazing things. And this was just a fun conversation. And I'm so happy to know Chelsea now and have her in my life because it's, like I said, so nice to know people and get to know people who are on the same path of becoming a mom for the first time. And yeah, check her out on Instagram. She's Chelsea Jade Curtis. Also check her out on TikTok. She's fun to follow on there. And of course, her podcast with JC, the What We Said podcast. So now, before we get into this episode with Chelsea, a couple things. One, I want to thank you guys so much for all the love on the solo episode from a couple weeks ago. I shared some really vulnerable things and talked about cancel culture, cyberbullying, asked your opinion on some of the things that I'm working on. And I just have really, really loved hearing from you guys on that episode. So if you haven't listened yet, I would love for you to check that one out after you listen to this episode. We also had Jonathan on last week. We gave a big announcement on that episode. Keep sending in your feedback on the announcement because we shared that specifically to hear what you guys think. And it's been amazing to hear your response. So lastly, before we get into this conversation with Chelsea, I would love to thank our sponsor for today's episode, Sakara. You guys know I am addicted to Sakara. I think there hasn't been a week that has passed that I've been home that I have not lived on Saqqara meals this entire summer and now into the fall. So if you're looking to change your diet instead of restricting what you eat, what if you focused on nourishing your body with the healthiest and most nutritious plant-based food? With Saqqara, you're putting the best in your body so that you can feel the best. So many people, we all want to feel better about what we eat, but sometimes it's hard to find time to prepare healthy food that also tastes good. With Saqqara, you can reach those health goals without sacrificing taste. So they are an organic 
ready to eat plant-based meal delivery service that focuses on powerful plant-based ingredients that are designed to boost your energy, improve your digestion, and get your skin glowing. They have a menu of creative chef-crafted breakfast, lunches, and dinners that changes weekly so you never get bored. I'm a specific fan of their breakfast. I think their breakfasts are always so on point. I also love their lunches and their dinners, their salads. You really cannot go wrong. What I love about Saqqara is that you always are getting enough food. I feel really satiated eating Saqqara and along with their delicious plant-rich meals, they also offer their daily wellness essentials like supplements and herbal teas to support your nutrition. I am such a fan of their best-selling metabolism super powder, which is made with organic raw cacao and it works to boost energy, eliminate bloating, minimize sugar cravings and reduce fatigue. They are amazing. We've also had the founders on the podcast, Whitney and Danielle, and I have known them since my New York City days. Right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off of your first order when you go to sakara.com slash balanced and enter the code blonde20 at checkout. That's Sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash balanced to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash balanced. Enter the code blonde20. Now let's Let's get into this episode with Chelsea. Chelsea, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yes, we are both. We are like <laughs> yeah. the exact same amount of pregnant, yes. which is incredible. Yeah, we walked up like one flight of stairs. We're like puffing and puffing. <laughs> yeah. It was just actually so nice to be with someone who understands. I know. Who you know, I, where I'm not like, oh, I'm pregnant. Like yeah. I'm not just really out of shape, <laughs> yeah. but you totally both. get it. I'm both at the same time because yeah. I'm pregnant, I feel like. But, well, same. Yeah. I have not. I mean, like we kind of briefly talked about with the sciatica and everything. I have just not been exercising. Yeah. It's not the pregnancy that I envisioned I would have, totally. which is working to accept what it is. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let's jump right into that because exactly. I feel like it's been such an interesting journey. I think when you have any kind of like, you have a a healthy lifestyle of what you like have a vision of what you, and I'm very much a planner and like kind of a perfectionist, which I've learned to use to my advantage a little bit instead of like to my disadvantage, I guess. And so when I was like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. I'm so excited to eat perfectly and like have this amazing diet and my kid is going to be so healthy. And I'm going to be like one of those pregnant moms that you see at the gym, just like killing it. And then that got completely just turned upside down as soon as I got pregnant. And I've just had to learn. It's been, I think God just knew that I needed to learn that lesson that it was like, okay, because you're like this, I'm going to like give you this challenge of being super sick of like having all of these kind of struggles with your body that it's just like not, yeah, like you said, not the pregnancy I thought I was going to have, but. Exactly. I have the same outlook as you. I think we learn the lessons that we are supposed to be taught. And it was the same for me. It was like, oh, I think I'm pregnant. I'm going to hop out of bed every morning and do the meditation and like live that exact type of life that that I would want for this baby. And then that has just been the exact opposite. And and the same with the food and with all of it, the exercise. And everyone always told me because I'm such a healthy person and I know you are too. We're both plant-based and health coaches and all that. And in this like wellness field, everyone was always like, you're going to just, you know, you're going to be like that pregnant person. (laughs) And it just hasn't happened. No, definitely not. I was um, in my first trimester, so, so sick. And yeah, thought that I would be eating just so like cleaner than ever. And all I wanted when I like would watch TV and there'd be a commercial of like IHOP and I'm like, oh, I want pancakes. Like that looks, it's the only thing that looks good. Just a regular plain pancake with like some earth balanced butter on it, maybe a tiny bit of syrup, like something so basic. And then I'd be disappointed in myself. And I would mm-hmm. almost feel like, okay, this is my first job as a mom is to like grow this child in me and like nurture it through what I'm eating. Am I doing, like, am I failing at my first job as a mom? Like I kept thinking that I kept feeling so guilty about it. And everyone I talked to who had been pregnant and had gone through the same thing was like, you, your body knows what to do. Like it was made for this. Just trust it. Just eat what you can. It doesn't matter if it's 
the healthiest thing on the planet. Just eat what you can, mm-hmm. whatever sounds good in the moment. And that's just good enough. Exactly. Completely. We're just so hard on ourselves. That reminds me of a hundred different things that happened in my first trimester going on a boat and it was really rocky and the entire oh time my gosh. I'm like screaming and crying <laughs> and like, this is the, boat. <laughs> who the heck knows why I got on this boat? I was in Tahoe with my family and yeah. it started as just like the clearest day mm-hmm. turned into a hurricane and we oh are like gosh. pounding into the waves. And my, I mean, my whole family, they were like, Jordan needs to get off this boat. Yeah. This is terrifying. So I was freaking out. And then I contacted my doctor after because they just kept touching my stomach. Yeah. And I was like nine or 10 weeks. Yeah. And just being like, this feels so not right. Um, and he just reminded me again, my doctor, babies are so resilient. Mm-hmm. Your body is so resilient. Unless you're in like a head on vehicle accident, yeah. you're fine. Yeah. So it's hard to trust those things, but our bodies are so resilient. So no, whether totally. that means that we're eating pancakes every day or yeah. we're just, you know, jumping up and down on the waves on the boat. Like totally. it's, it's pretty amazing to see how strong these little beings are. Yeah, I know. It is amazing. My little sister was actually telling me, I think I was like seven weeks pregnant. And you know, you're, when you're in that first trimester, you're like anxious, you are really sick. You're trying to hide it, but you're also like, so excited. There's just so many things that are happening in those first couple of weeks, but you're also scared because you know that it's very common to, you know, have a miscarriage or something within those weeks. You're like extra careful. You want to do everything right. And I was kind of expressing that to my little sister. And she was like, you just have to remember that this baby wants to live more than anything. So it's going to try its hardest to survive. It's not just like waiting for you to mess up. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's trying its best. And so you just have to like put your faith in the baby and it's going to like, what's going to happen is going to happen anyway. So you just have to do your best and that's such good advice. Yeah. It's so true. And our bodies were, were made for this. Like we evolved to do this. So the babies are, they're very strong. Yeah. And that was similar advice to what someone gave me when it was actually um, January. I thought I was pregnant and I was, but it was like a chemical pregnancy. So oh. it ended very early, yeah. but it was like, it was an interesting time. And I was freaking out, of course, because I just wanted to take a test and I wanted it to be positive, but it was too early. And I was told no matter what you do from here forward is not going to affect whether this baby comes to fruition or not. Exactly. Um, And that was helpful. Yeah. I mean, because we want to control these situations so much, but it's out of our control. Yeah. It's That's so been true. a huge lesson. Yeah, I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying is when you have a personality that wants to be so perfectionistic and and controlling, and I am like, I would say I'm pretty controlling about certain things. And it is like the biggest lesson on like letting go of control and just, mm-hmm. you know, doing what you think is best and whatever comes, comes. And it's like, okay. I, like I said, God was like, you are going to learn this lesson really hard during this pregnancy that you cannot control it and that it's going to like be harder and different than you thought it was going to be, but mm-hmm. that's okay. Like mm-hmm. you can still have good experiences and you can still find strength in those things, I guess. Exactly. That's the best outlook. Yeah. I love it. So going back yeah. to pre-pregnancy and then we'll yeah. get back into pregnancy yeah. <laughs> um, because how could we not yeah. with the stage that we're both in? Um, I want to hear about where you grew up and what you wanted to be when you grew up. Yeah. All that good stuff. Well, I grew up with a bunch of siblings. So I grew up with four brothers, one sister in Arizona and Growing up, I feel like I was a very sensitive girl, very independent, very loud, but very sensitive. Like you wouldn't, you know, a lot of times when you see like a very outgoing, what seems to be confident person, you don't always think of them as sensitive. You always think of them as like hard exterior. But I think just growing up, I was always very sensitive to what other people thought about me, to animals, like just a very sensitive person, tenderhearted, I Mm -hmm. guess. And you know, growing up with brother brothers, I always say like, oh, well, I had to learn how to have tough skin. But then when I look back on it, I'm like, wait, did I actually have tough skin though? When I like, or did I almost get more sensitive because I had brothers because they were very nice. I didn't have mean brothers by any means, but boys nonetheless. Mm-hmm. And so I definitely did have this balance of trying to be tough and trying to be like the boys and trying to keep up with them. But then also being like this very sensitive 
girl. And I always wanted to be like a zookeeper, <laughs> like random things. I never was like, I want to be a doctor. I was like doing something with animals, maybe being a vet. And then I think when I was little, I just kind of wanted to have fun. I just wanted to like be helpful to people and have fun. I was never like, I'm going to be the president of the United States, like some like little kids are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as I kind of grew up, that kind of stayed with me. I, as I look back on my childhood now, I kind of see this pattern of, have you taken that um, personality test, like the color code test? I haven't. It's like, there's four colors you can be, I think it's like blue, yellow, white, or red. And it's basically like what motivates you. So I think it's like fun, power, safety and something else but mine is fun so um I what think, color is that I think it's yellow I don't know I, I need to while. take this test it's really fun. fun yeah it's really cool and it's very simple there's only four outcomes obviously but yeah I think all through high school I just kind of had this positive outlook on life that I just wanted to have fun I wanted everyone around me to feel included to have fun and yeah I was kind of like me as a child. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I relate to the sensitivity, to mm -hmm. the animal loving, all that good stuff. Totally. I learned um, probably about five years ago that I'm considered a highly sensitive person, mm. HSP. Have oh, yeah. Heard I've, heard, I've heard um, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to podcasting. Yeah. Uh, that's actually how I learned about it. That spoke to me mm -hmm. and taught me so much. And HSPs were very sensitive to animals and we feel things. And it's just like that that energy that goes through everything, yeah. whether you're loud or quiet or introverted or extroverted. So my question for you then is you said you were always sensitive to what people thought about you. And now you have a podcast and a big audience. Yeah. How does that translate to what you do now? Yeah. Great question. I think, like I said, I always came off as a very, I think I come off sometimes as blunt and like, like I don't care but deep down, I really do care about certain things. There, there are other things where if I'm confident about it in myself, I don't care what people think about me because I'm like, well, I, I don't agree with you. So like, I don't care. But I think what I learned when we started the podcast and we started to get, and genuinely we have amazing listeners and like rarely have mean people say things, but the things that would come out like on reviews or like messages when we first started it. And I was kind of just introduced into this because I do it with JC, who's, who is my co-host and my best friend. And she had a big audience when we started the podcast. I did not. So it was kind of like me coming into this new world, getting introduced to her audience as well. Mm -hmm. And people would say things like, oh my gosh, these girls are so uneducated, so dumb, like val like classic Valley girls. And that would hurt me more than someone calling me like stupid and ugly or, or like ugly or something mm -hmm. like that. But, but when they kind of said something that I always felt, I learned that I felt insecure about that. I maybe am not as smart as people or yeah, as like, right. as I would like to be, or that people don't know I'm smart or that I don't come across as smart. And so I would get really upset by those. And those would like actually make me cry where I'm like, oh my gosh, I thought that I was like some tough girl. That's like, you know, if they say something else, I'm like, I don't care what you think. Like, you know, I love myself, but then I was kind of, it, it's like pouring salt on a wound. It's exactly. Like, if the wound is closed, it doesn't hurt. Salt doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But when the wound is open, I had to kind of, so I was actually grateful because it actually helped me start to, if someone said something that actually hurt me, I'd be like, okay, obviously there's a problem there. There's obviously something that I have regardless of what they think, it doesn't really matter. Their opinion is based on so many different things that have nothing to do with me. But obviously that hurt me for a reason. And I should maybe take a little look <laughs> into my soul to kind of see like, why is this hurting me? Why is this wound not maybe healed quite yet? Or why do I think that I'm, you know, this way or that way? And I actually started working with JC's dad, who's a life coach. His name's Andrew. And something we worked a lot on was that I would bring that up and I'd be like, I'm noticing I do a lot of things like when people tell me facts about something that I already know, I always say like, oh yeah, I knew that. Like, I want to make sure that they knew that I know mm -hmm. or they know that I knew that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he basically was like, oh, what is the exact phrase? Like knowledge is the enemy of learning. And so when we think that we know everything, 
were like, whenever I would say that, it would instantly close me off to learning from that, whatever that person had to say. Cause Mm -hmm. maybe they did, maybe I did know that small fact, but maybe I didn't know something that they were going to say afterwards, but it's like my ego, like trying to protect myself, like, oh, you don't think I'm smart. I'm smart. Trust me. Yes. I I know know these things. (laughs) Totally. And I think it kind of goes back as I've looked into my past again, it goes back to wanting to feel like one of the boys. Like I'm, I can do what my brothers can do. Like, yeah, it's a very masculine. It's the more masculine way of being. Yeah. Like I'm not just some dumb little girl. Like I'm smart and I want to prove it to you, but I don't think that you think I'm smart. So it's like this complex that I kind of had to overcome. But I think over time now with going back to your original question with like, you know, rude comments or anything like that, it's seeing it from a different perspective of what they say has absolutely nothing to do with me and who I am. And when I understand that, it doesn't affect me at all. Maybe for a split second, like it's very normal to be like, oh, that's kind of hurtful that someone took time out of their day to say something that they know would hurt me. But what they say has no truth to me because they don't know me. Exactly. Even if they did think that they know me, they don't. It has everything to do with how they grew up, their opinions, their preferences. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with me. Their insecurities. Exactly. For sure. So it's been good. I'm actually really grateful that I kind of was opened up to it pretty quickly and understood that about why these things were making me upset so that I could kind of get over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that outlook. I totally relate. It's those things that people say in the reviews or the comments that you feel insecure about yourself or you realize that you do. They're so hard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I've, I've had those similar experiences. People could say something that I feel really confident about and they could say, like, I saw this comment recently that was like, this girl is just so desperate to be relevant or something. And I was like, that means nothing to me because I've never tried to stay relevant. Like that's not something that I even think about. I just do what I want to do. I have the conversations I want to have post about the things I want to post that kind of just made me laugh. Cause I thought, I wonder what's going on with that person that made them take time to write that yeah. review. Of course, I don't like seeing it. And yeah. um, they're like, I'm going to give this two stars because the guests are really good, but she's so desperate to stay yeah. relevant. But they gave one star to, I'm like, what the heck <laughs> yeah. is this person? But then when someone says the, the Valley Girl thing or like, which I get all the time as well. Yeah, it's also like, I am so a Valley annoying. Girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh my God, her voice, which is something that goes all the way back to like high school and childhood, you know, people would say those kind of things too. Yeah. Um, that's the stuff that's yeah. so much harder to get past yeah. when you think, oh, is that true? Should I be working on that? Yeah. Oh, um, this is a consensus that everybody thinks about <laughs> me sure, and I'm just sure. not in on it. But there's so much bravery to put yourself out there. And I think that's why other people who put themselves out there are typically so supportive because yeah. they know nobody's perfect. You can really like someone, you can like their content. You don't have to agree with everything about them. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah, I like your outlook. It's good that you started working with JC's dad. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. I know. It's so weird because obviously we've been best friends since high school. So I know her family very well. I've slept over her house like plenty of times. And I think she did a live with him like a couple, maybe two years ago or something. And he, I never really knew he was a life coach. And obviously like I was into health coaching and I was a health coach, but I was kind of looking for my own coach, whether it was a a health coach, a life coach, like someone along the lines to do for me what I do for other people, Mm -hmm. because I understand like how beneficial it is. Yes. No matter where you're at. And he was talking to her and I, and I can't remember exactly what he said, but basically like the way that he was describing the way he views life in general, I was like, I like that. That makes me feel, that's like something I'm looking for and something that all of these self-help books that I've read make sense when he says it like, okay, that makes sense. I'm, I resonate with that. And so I like message him and I'm like, um, be my life coach. And so we, um, had a, a conversation and basically yeah, I really liked what he was saying. And I was like, okay, let's do this. And it's been amazing. We started like the beginning of 2020. So basically right after COVID and the pandemic and everything. So, and we'd also just moved to LA. It was kind of like a transitional time in our life. So it was perfect because we got to start really working on, you know, you can give the best advice in the world. And I would always be like, I give such good advice to my clients, but then I would come to him with a problem 
and realized I was not taking my own advice <laughs> without even realizing I wasn't until he would like kind of bring it up. Because when you look at other people, it's so easy. Like it's like when your friend has a boyfriend and you're just like, how do you not see that this is not working? Or like that he's toxic or, or something like that. And you're just like, how do you not see this? But it's so much harder when you're in the orbit of it. You can't like see from an outside perspective. So it's so helpful to have, whether it is a coach or just even a friend who listens to you without trying to like even give you advice, just someone who's like a sounding board who can be like, okay, well, what if we look at it from this perspective and just kind of say it back to you? And it's like, oh, well, now that you put it that way, it actually seems simple. And I give people this advice all the time. So I should probably start you know, applying it to my own life as well. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to give other people advice than to apply it to your own life. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so helpful and healthy to have those outside perspectives. Yeah. And usually when I give advice now, I understand that it's usually advice that I'm needing at the time. Exactly. It's not even necessarily for other people. It's like, you know, even on our podcast, if we're like, it's really good to have a morning routine that you're consistent (laughs) with that, you know, and it's really good to journal your feelings and I'll be like, that's for me. <laughs> oh, it's always, it, yeah. it always is. I think that's such a common thread between those of us who give advice mm-hmm. online, whether it's coaching or just influencing blogging, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's always, I, I sense like I'm yeah. saying something and then I'm like, I need to, I need to get back yeah. into this. Like I know why I'm saying this because it's exactly. what I mean. But it's amazing because mm-hmm. that way you can help other people and help yourself at the same time. Totally. If you are open to listening yeah. to yourself. Definitely. That's a good point. Being Mm -hmm. open to listening to yourself. For sure. So how did you get into health coaching to begin with? So I was very into, so my dad growing up also was a big health nut as they called it in like the early 2000s. -hmm. I still love saying that. Yeah. They, he, um, was very into exercise. He was very into diet and kind of keeping up with the healthiest, you know, new diet and was always in great shape growing up. And I, I always tell the story because I think it's so funny. He didn't eat sugar growing up. So I thought that all dads like were not supposed to eat sugar. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. Like he didn't eat ice cream. He never ate like any treats. So I just thought that was like a dad thing. And so when I would see my friend's dad's, eating ice cream at like a birthday party or cake or something, I would be like, dads are not allowed to eat that. Like, what is he doing? That is so amazing. And so, um, yeah, that's what I've seen growing up is his example. And he would... He never pushed that on us, like you kids need to be healthy, but he just kind of did his own thing and Mm -hmm. we just saw that growing up. And I think that has like influenced a lot of us kids to kind of find our own way to be healthy. It was never like you have to do it my way or the highway. And also my mom is not the same as him. She's, you know, very health conscious and she does things that, you know, to help her health as well, but she's not as much of a stickler, I guess, as my dad was growing up. So I was always kind of aware of health and wellness in that space And high school, I think it was to my demise (laughs) because that was what, like 2010, 2011. And one of the good things about social media nowadays is you have so many different opinions, but you can kind of like choose which one resonates with you the most and which one like makes you feel the best basically. And Back then we didn't really have, like maybe we had Facebook, but no, the only thing you saw about health and wellness was magazines and like magazine covers and, you know, people being like, lose weight, lose weight, lose weight. That was like all it was about. There was no body positivity movement, anything like that. So of course in high school, I became obsessed with like becoming as small as possible basically. So I would be like, okay, I'm going to run after school every day. And that's after I go to swim practice. And that's after I go to dance. And also those were the two sports that I did was dance and swim. Like the two sports you're in minimal clothing Mm -hmm. around lots of other girls. You're just comparing yourself like 24 seven dance. You're in front of a mirror with other girls and like leotards. So you're just like, oh, okay, let's pick apart my body compared to everybody else's. And so, yeah, I would like start running and I would start eating my food really slow. And I would start like counting my calories and that's when it kind of started that I was thinking I was very healthy, but looking back hindsight, 2020 kind of started my disordered eating a little bit where it was like obsession with the way that I looked and results and what I was eating was strictly for the way that I looked, not necessarily even for health. Mm -hmm. So as I kind of got out of high school, it never really was anything. I'm very grateful. It never got too far where I never needed 
like a lot of external help, but never got to that point. It was just kind of always a, more of a mental thing that I was struggling with internally that I never really talked about. But then as I got into college, um, you know, as college girls do, they go through like what I call second puberty, basically, where your body starts changing. You start to have curves more. You start to have a different routine. You're not doing high school sports. So my body was changing a ton. My skin was changing. I was getting curvier and I was like, what is happening? I don't want this. This is the last thing that I like wanted to happen to me. And so I started to kind of start like a binge cycle and without realizing it, because I didn't even know what that was because the only like disordered eating I'd ever heard of up up to that point was like anorexia on TV. Mm -hmm. And it was like kind of glamorized a little bit. Like, oh, these are what like, you know, high school girls do to stay skinny. It's like anorexia or, you know, bulimia. And so I had no idea that like what I was doing was something that could be helped really. I just thought that's how I had to function for the rest of my life was, you know, kind of trying to restrict throughout the day. And then at night having these binge episodes which I didn't know were binge episodes, feeling like extreme shame and guilt and just feeling like absolute crap mentally, physically, emotionally, basically. And then the next day trying to do it again in this like continuous cycle. And then also being, you know, extremely self-aware of what I looked like, what my body looked like and like very self-conscious, my low, low, low self-esteem. And which was affecting everything else as well as like my college life, my dating life, every other aspect of my life. Because when you have no self-confidence, it leaks into everything. So was struggling (laughs) quite a bit those years without really knowing what was wrong too. So I think that's also, you know, me trying to look at the positives of social media nowadays is girls will message me after, because I've, I've shared my story on our podcast before and girls who are young, like will message me who are like 17 or 18 and say like, oh, I've noticed I've been doing that as well. I didn't know that that was like something that I could like really help myself with. And that makes me happy because I didn't really learn about it until I was like 21 and I had to read about it in the library. Like I looked, I had a book that was like about disordered eating and I read about, you know, binge restrict cycle. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Like, And as weird as it sounds, when I read it for the first time after struggling with it, you know, silently, basically without even knowing I was struggling with it, just thinking that that's how I was going to feel about myself for the rest of my life. I read what it was and all the symptoms and like everything that happened afterwards and how you felt. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is actually like, I felt great when I read it because I was like, this is something that I can heal, that I can help myself with. It was like actually my first feeling of hope instead of feeling like hopeless, It wasn't like, now I have this label on me that's going to be, you know, this huge, heavy burden. It was like, well, I've already had it. So the name doesn't really do anything about it. It's just now I can see that I can kind of pinpoint what's happening and fix it, you know, as much as I can. So I started reading a lot of self-help books, trying to get into like how to help myself with this. I told my parents about it. They also didn't really know what it was either. They were just kind of like, are you sure? Like, are you sure there's, Mm -hmm. you seem fine. And then I started going to therapy, which was amazing. And she really helped me just kind of talk about my feelings because at that point, I think I really struggled talking about my feelings and how I felt about myself. And I was like, there's just so much shame and embarrassment that I was carrying that it was really nice to get out to somebody who knew so much about it. And so just to take a pause when, if you do feel like that, if you're listening and it's like, oh, I've, you know, have disordered eating, I don't necessarily know what it is. And you're like trying to go to therapy. I think people usually ask like, what's the first step? And I think First of all, telling somebody that you trust, that you know is, first of all, a good listener and is not going to try and like tell you, no, you don't, you're fine or something like that. Just because like admitting it is a really good feeling to just being like, okay, now that I've said it out loud, I can kind of face it now. Now that it's out of my head, it doesn't feel so heavy. And then from there you can like, I talked to my doctor. I was just like, I don't know what to do. I think I have an eating disorder. Like, do you know somebody who can help me? And then she recommended me to a therapist who specialized in anxiety and eating disorders. And I was like, perfect, match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. So from that point, it kind of put me into this world of changing my whole perspective on health. Like what did I used to think health was and what did I think it looked like to now 
what is it really? And what is the truth behind all of it? And it led me to find my, I was actually at lunch with a friend and I was kind of being like, do I want to go to, you know, do I want to become a therapist and help other girls with this? Do I want to, cause I've now I've seen the light at the end of the tunnel and I just like want to tell everybody like you can get better. It's, it's, you know, it's not your destiny to feel like this for the rest of your life. And I went to uh, lunch with a friend and she was like, oh, you definitely need to check out IIN, like the school that she'd heard about. I don't think she had gone to it, but she was like, you would love it. It's called health coaching. And I was like, oh, I've never heard of that, but sounds great. So I looked it up, took like a sample class or something like that. And I was like, I have to do this. Like, I'm just going to sign up. So I went to IIN and got into it and kind of figured out my niche within IIN, which is amazing because Mm -hmm. you can kind of do whatever you like want to do from that point. You know, people go in with degrees, without degrees, wanting to start a food shop. Like you can have many different goals uh, besides just being a health coach. But it was really nice for me because it was not only like I love nutrition and food and like the science behind it, but I also am, like I said, a very sensitive person, very into emotions and understanding like human psychology. So it was kind of a good blend of both where I can mm-hmm. be like, okay, I can help girls who are going through what I'm going through, but like at a very specific level of, you know, their daily routines and helping them have realistic, sustainable goals and not crazy lose 30 pounds in 30 days for no reason kind of goals and like understand why they want what they want kind of thing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best reason to get into something Mm -hmm. is because you've learned those lessons yourself and you've struggled yourself and to be able to help other people not fall into those same traps is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, It's really rewarding. I love it. Yeah. We have a similar journey in that way. Just like finding IIN in a similar way Mm -hmm. and then finding the niche and all of that, which I don't know about you, but my niche within what I'm interested in with health has changed so much Yeah, since I first started. At first for me, it was also about helping people with disordered eating. And I was very much coming out of that phase of my life. And now it's different because I've experienced other things, chronic illness, like plant-based life really helped me with my chronic illness. So now that's what I'm more interested in. Yeah. But it's such a cool, it's such a cool way to help people. Yeah. And when you have gone through it or gone through it, it adds a whole different perspective. Like when you have somebody helping you, who's gone through it, who knows exactly the thoughts that you have, like Mm -hmm. who can pinpoint, like, is this maybe what you're feeling? And you're like, oh my gosh, I've never felt so understood. It's so helpful. It so, really is. Yeah. Yes. So is that something that you actively do now? Do you health coach right now? Yes. Well, up until about a couple months ago when I got super mm-hmm. sick because talking was so hard for me, I would try to do it pretty often, but I started to kind of slow it down. So I'm kind of like on maternity leave, I guess, for a little bit. And it's kind of weird because it's the first time in a couple of years that I haven't had clients. I just finished my last client like program actually yesterday. And I was like, this is a weird feeling. Like, I feel like my time is like very open. Yeah. Um, but I hope to start again, you know, a couple of months after I have the baby. So maybe in like beginning of spring next year to like really start up clients again. But yeah, I love it. And, and it's kind of the same thing. It kind of changes. I notice I attract the clients who are going through what I Exactly. have either gone through recently or am going through where I'm like, they'll say something and I'm like, I just talked to my coach about this. Like, exactly. Yeah. And now you'll start attracting people who yeah. are pregnant or who are trying to get pregnant and yeah. people who have recently had a baby mm-hmm. who are also continuing ongoing health stuff. Totally. Okay, guys, just a brief interruption from this conversation to talk about my favorite CBD, but not only my favorite CBD, this is the only CBD that I use. And it's kind of crazy because in the wellness world, I probably get an email about a new CBD company at least once a day. I would say probably closer to two or three or four times a day at least. And that's every day, always, about a brand new CBD company. And I'm so happy to see the industry of CBD blowing up, but I am loyal and dedicated to my number one favorites, and that is Cured Nutrition. I love Cured Nutrition because they really work. They use pure and potent ingredients. I love the founder. 
Joseph Sheehy. He's been on the podcast. I also love their products. They feel amazing on the body. The pain salve is my favorite, as you guys know. I also love their tinctures that are amazing for anxiety, reducing inflammation, helping you sleep, helping you feel amazing, and they can also help regulate your nervous system. Cured has a lot of different products now, including their brand new about to launch Elevated Elixirs, which is CBD, mushrooms, vitamin D, caffeine, and sugar-free beverage designed to boost your energy, mood, and clarity. They are launching so soon. You can sign up on their website to be the first to find out more. But for now, they have Cured Rise. They have Aura. They have Zen. And depending on what you're looking for, whether it's more balance or something to help with your anxiety, there is a product for everything. So check them out at curednutrition.com. Use the code BLONDE, which will get you 10% off. Tag me on your Instagram stories when you try. Some of the standout products are the Pain Salve. I use it every day even while pregnant and also the mint tincture if you need a little bit of support with sleep and at the end of the day reducing anxiety that is curednutrition.com code blonde i think that's so healthy that you're taking that time while you're pregnant that was another question that i had for you was like what is maternity leave going to look like for you if you have any idea yeah because that's something i think about frequently with the podcast yeah i don't have a co-host obviously so yeah. there's a lot of different ideas swirling all the time mm -hmm. like do i just shut it down for a while do i go on a hiatus my husband talked about taking it over because people love him he's yeah. hilarious <laughs> but there's just so many options it's like what are we going to do and i, I don't want to I just want to spend time with the baby and like soak in that magical time totally. that we'll never get back. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, that's a great question. I know it's so hard to know when you've never had a kid before because it's like I've realized and I joke, I'm like, I know nothing about kids. Like <laughs> the, the more pregnant I get, the like more I realize I don't know anything. And I like will call my mom like every day. I'm like, does the baby sleep with you? Like how often do I breastfeed? Like, you know, just random questions where I'm like, I didn't even realize I don't even know this. Mm -hmm. Like, why do I need a breast pump? Like people are telling me, I don't even know what that does. Like, why do I need that? So it's weird because people will ask me that. And yeah, like, because I have a co-host and there's people on our team for our podcast, it's not just me that I'm like, oh, you know, I can kind of do it from whenever or whatever. But we've kind of had to plan it ahead of time. So we've kind of talked about it. But again, it's like, I don't know what I'm going to be feeling like at that mm -hmm. time. So for us, we're just batching like, and, and also I don't know when I'm going to have birth exactly. So, exactly. you know, I could go into labor before my due date, after my due date. And so, yeah. So we're trying to batch ahead of time, like a good amount of episodes. And then luckily because I have a co-host, it's like a worst case scenario. She could be doing it and she could have guests on. But also I was saying, I'm like, I have been taking a break from a lot of other things that are you know, part of my job and I love the podcast so much. So I'm like, that would be the first thing I would get back to is, you know, taking an hour. And luckily with podcasting, it's so nice because like I could technically be breastfeeding and at the yeah. same time. But um, yeah, it's kind of hard to know. It's like, I plan on doing the podcast for the rest of my life as far as I can see. So um, in terms of like a break, I always think, this is what I thought though, before I got pregnant, I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. I don't need to like do anything differently. But then when I was so sick, I'm like, I need to like realize when I need to take a break. When it's really nice to have JC because she's very much a go-getter, very um, on top of things. So it's nice to have her to like kind of lean on when I'm sick because it's like, yeah, okay. And then if she ever is sick or she has things going on, it's like nice that she can kind of lean on me as well. So it's nice to have that like support system. Mm -hmm. But so it's been nice to kind of have that as well to be like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not doing like as much as I usually do, but I kind of have to like just take it day by day. So I think to answer your question in a long roundabout way, we're going to try and prepare as much as possible and like batch things out so that luckily it's around Christmas. So we usually do more not as like up-to-date things you know because that's what we love exactly. about doing like current you know life updates and things like that but usually around Christmas we'll do like holiday stories and for sure you know January is more like okay pr productivity and stuff like that so that's the plan as of right now but yeah I don't know I 
as far as, like I said, with health coaching and like even content creation, that's the thing that I mostly like sometimes stresses me out in terms of, you know, planning and scheduling. And I have to like take out big chunks of time. That's what I want to kind of maybe take a step back from for the time being to kind of see when I can get back into that full time. And I'm not like even for creating YouTube videos or social media content, it's better for me to just have the mindset of like, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do, but you can do it anything you want to. So it's like, if I want to podcast like an hour a week where I'm like, Hey babe, can you watch, you know, the baby for an hour while I go to JC's and have a break and we can like talk about funny stuff for an hour. It's like, then that's what I'm going to do. Or if I w- have the urge to make a YouTube video, then I'll do it, but I don't need to. And that actually makes it more exciting for me to create content Yeah, <laughs> when I don't have like you know, I'm, yeah, I'm like deadlines. chained to it, mm-hmm. you know, so. I totally agree. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. And thinking similarly, trying to batch ahead, but also thinking, I don't know how that's going to look really. Yeah, how long do I have to batch? What about for? when we're like nine and a half months pregnant or, you know, at some point I'm going to want to like step back exactly. even prior to um, the baby coming. So there's so many thoughts, but like you said, I think it's such a gift that it's Christmas time yeah. when we're giving birth because that's such a time anyway. Like I usually do best of the show episodes for yeah. like a month. Um, to take some time off for the holidays. And then January, everyone's just slowly getting back yeah, into exactly. life again, which I think is going to be such a good cozy month for us to be home with our babies yeah. and like get to know these new routines. Totally. And like you, well, I don't know what to expect at all. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, we don't have a nursery yet. Like there are yeah. so many things to think about, but I do think I mean, having a baby at any time is amazing, but I think this like winter cozy time is really special. No, I agree. I was so excited when I found out. Um, I've been listening to Christmas music because I'm just like so excited yes, for getting Christmas in the time. Mo- I need to start doing that. Yeah, I'm like, I'm just so excited for... Also, I... So my due date is December 13th and I thought for some reason that like... I would have a one month old by the time Christmas came around. So I was like, you know, going to visit family and all this stuff. And again, I don't know like yeah what a one month old could could, yeah Yeah. but then I looked at the calendar I'm like oh Christmas is the week after I have the child like I'm gonna have one week old and that kind of threw my plans for a loop where my mom was like don't make any specific plans about Thanksgiving don't make any specific plans about Christmas or New Year's like you just have to go Mm -hmm. with the flow and I was like (laughs) I know that's harder for me to do it's to just like I know not I can go with the flow once I have a plan but I'm not good at not having a plan and going with the flow. It's like, I'm fine with switching things up, but to just completely like let the universe take control is like hard for me sometimes. Yeah. These are our lessons for sure. Mm -hmm. Cause we're in the exact same position. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. So our current plan, quote unquote, is to do Christmas at my sister's house. She yeah. lives in the valley where okay, typically that's close. Yeah. we would go to Northern California where I'm from, do my mm-hmm. parents. But once we learned that I was pregnant, we decided we're going to do that. But then the whole other thing is like, will I even be there? Yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> might, be awesome. might I be yeah. giving birth? I might have a couple day year old newborn. Yeah. I'm not year old, a couple day old yeah. newborn. I might just be, you know, not, yeah. not wanting to be in the car, not wanting to go anywhere. Just yeah. stay close to the hospital. We're close to UCLA where I'll be giving birth. So yeah. it's so hard. Yeah. And my like 12 year old niece, she was like, are you going to be at Christmas? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I might have something come <laughs> She's up. She's like, is the baby <laughs> going to be at Christmas? We, we just yeah. have no idea. I know. So it's hard. Yeah, too, it is hard. Because you think... want to like ha- be surrounded by your family with a new baby because it's like, of again, course. my this will be my, f- my side of the family's first grandchild. So my mom and dad are so excited. But then my youngest brother's also still in high school. So it's like, my mom's like, well, I want to be with him for his last Christmas here before he goes off to college. And I'm like, well, maybe we could just have our first Christmas like by ourselves. And I'm like, I've never done that before. I know. We did so, that last year with yeah. like everything going on um, in the world. We were yeah. supposed to go out to Sacramento for Christmas. Oh, yeah. My parents got sick for a couple of weeks. Yeah. They're fine now. But um, we did Christmas here, just yeah. like me and Jonathan and Hudson, our cat, who yeah. I'm surprised has not come out to say hello. Yeah, I was going to say, um, he's, usually, yeah. he's usually right in the midst of everything. <laughs> and it was actually really wonderful. Mm-hmm. It was like, we were so Different, sad about yeah. it because- 
such a special time to be with family and so traditions and everything but it was so fun yeah and well, special yeah yeah so you guys will like do your thing you'll yeah. create your traditions if that's mm-hmm. what it ends up being and then you totally. could always do a belated Christmas with your family which is what True. we did in January and that oh, was fun. like kind of fun yeah that is fun yeah two Christmases that's yeah. even better <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. so we'll see but yeah we're both in that interesting area where mm-hmm. you'll probably have a Sagittarius Mm -hmm. I will probably have a Capricorn, Mm -hmm. but could be, you know, I could have a Sagittarius very easily. Yeah. You could have a Capricorn very easily. I know. JC's a Capricorn. So she's always like, I'm silently rooting for it to be late so that you have a Capricorn baby. You wouldn't have to be that late. Yeah. You know, I know it's like in close. No, eight days or so. so. I think it starts on the 21st. Yeah. So, yeah, I know. It's so crazy. I know. And what's your sign? I'm an Aries. Okay. So I'm good with both. I mean, I would love another fire sign in the family, but also my oldest brother is a Sagittarius as well. So I'm like, oh, it's just the tradition, like the oldest yeah. kid and he's a boy, he's a Sagittarius. So I'm like, I'm used to it. You know, I've seen my brother and how he acts. I'm like, okay, I love my brother. I think he's awesome. So yeah, it makes we sense have a little Sagittarius. Great. And what's your husband's sign? He's a Taurus. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, you'll either get another fire sign or another earth sign. I know. We'll see. It's so funny. Yeah, it's we'll so see. exciting. I know. And so we both are having plant-based pregnancies mm-hmm. and that's something that I was so excited to talk to you about because yeah. people have so many questions about that and how's that Definitely. going for you? Like, how do you feel eating plant-based? Yeah, so I've been plant-based, I think for six years now, six and a half years, coming up on seven. And so luckily I had a lot of time before I was pregnant to like really just get used to the lifestyle. I think it would have been way harder if I would have just started being plant-based when I was pregnant or like months before, because I feel like I would have been like lost. And especially when my, my appetite completely changed where I was like, okay, I only want like simple carbs and, you know, white bread. Like how do I stay you know, eating plant-based, but so I felt very prepared. I haven't gotten that many, I guess, like negative comments about it, but I have gotten questions about it. And I feel, I feel the like undertone of judgment sometimes, like, you know, you need to be eating fish or you need to be eating like these certain proteins. Otherwise, like, how is your baby going to possibly survive? And I have had a great experience with it. Like the first trimester was rough, but it would have been rough no matter what. So I, like I said, I was well aware of lots of plant-based uh, foods. So I had a lot of like coconut yogurt. I had a lot of strawberries, <laughs> had a lot of bananas, could not look at a vegetable, could not eat a vegetable, could not like smell anything cooked. Had a lot of like spinach with mustard sandwiches when I got a little less sick with like some... Have you had chow cheese? You no. know, chow. Oh, yeah. The brand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I had a lot of that. <laughs> Lots of vegan cheese over here too. Yes. For sure. So good. And navigating that was hard because I felt like, again, like I wasn't being healthy necessarily. Like I was kind of being a chigan, I guess, as they say. But then as I started to get my appetite back, which was just like the best thing in the entire world when I, I thought I would never be able to enjoy food again. And I was so sad. And then as I started to get like not so sick and you know, not so much acid reflux as, you know, uh, as regurgitation, like I'm fine with the burping as long as it's not like regurgitation Mm -hmm, for sure. I started to kind of get my regular diet back, which did have a lot of vegetables and had a lot of, um, you know, beans again, which I was like, thank goodness I can have like, you know, burrito bowls again and salads and different things. And I still definitely eat processed sugar or like eat certain things every once in a while, but because I've, I've kind of gone back and forth on like how restrictive I am. And I have a pretty good, I would say mindset now with food. So that has helped me, I think more than even just having a plant-based diet is like having a good relationship with food while I'm being pregnant more so than you know, I think the plant base is just a bonus where I just feel like I'm, I've done lots of research. And I love, love listening to podcast episodes about it. Um, and like trying to do the best I can with, but, but I think that goes for any diet. I think people like think when you eat plant-based that you have to try just so much harder to, um, eat healthy when in reality, like 
it's funny if I post a what I eat in a day plant-based pregnant, like people will be like, this is horrible for your baby. And I'm like, but if I posted something where I was eating like Cheetos and I was going to like fast food places, I feel like people don't say anything. Like they, I know. maybe they, like some people would say something about it not being healthy, but they don't think it's as scary and dangerous as a it's plant-based so diet. It's so wild about yeah. the world that we live in. I think about this all the time and I post about this all the time too because it yeah. shocks me. It's so that weird. it's more socially acceptable in the world that we live in to eat fast food, to eat these things that we know are full of just like empty ingredients, no, no yeah. nutrients, no nourishment whatsoever. Pizza, burgers, all that kind of but stuff. But they see you eat a burger and they're like, oh, at least you're getting your protein. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you eat this like, like extremely balanced, nutritious, mm-hmm. not restrictive plant-based diet. Yeah. And you're, you know, putting your body in danger and mm-hmm. your baby. And it's so wild. It's honestly it's very so weird. wild. Yeah. But when you're educated on the subject, as we obviously both are, else we wouldn't be eating this way. You just realize it's so easy. It's so, yeah. it's so healthy. It's so easy. Yes, of course, you know, you're making sure to get those omegas, the protein, but the whole protein thing is such a myth to begin with yeah. anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah. yes, you're eating beans, you're eating nuts, yeah. you're getting protein. Yeah, exactly. It's so crazy. I, as somebody commented on one of my TikToks where I did like a, what I eat in a day, like, you know, pregnancy and plant-based. And of course, somebody whose like whole account was dedicated to like hating on vegans, like, yeah, they commented like, this will not be good for the baby. And I was like, okay, uh, that makes me mad for some reason. And so I like, (laughs) I downloaded my fitness pal, which was like the bane of my existence (laughs) because that's what I used to like track my calories Mm -hmm. and my workouts on. So I downloaded it again and I'm like, you know, I'm going to check to see like exactly just to prove to myself, like, because I intuitive eat. So I don't ever like track what I eat. And I was like, I'm just going to, you know, make sure that what I'm eating has all these nutrients or whatever. So I plugged in everything that I ate that day in the, what I eat. And it was like perfect uh, meal. And I'm like, I didn't even try to plan for this. It's just when you, it's taken years to get to that point. But when you first of all, have a basic education of nutrition and like, you know, the things that you want to be eating every day, you know, so legumes, proteins, you know, produce and um, different things you can incorporate to get that. Then when you intuitive eat, it's easier to be like, okay, so, you know, I had this for breakfast and this for lunch. What do I feel like I want? Maybe something a little lighter because I had like a pretty heavy lunch with a lot of, you know, beans and grains and stuff. And so maybe for dinner, I'll have something more vegetable heavy that has like a little bit of protein or something like that, whatever. Or like, I need some iron. I'm going to put some mushrooms on it or something like that. And so it kind of was a good like testament to me when I looked at what I was eating and I'm like, why am I ever hard on myself? I'm doing a good job. Like I'm actually giving myself the nutrients that I need that I feel comfortable with. And I kind of realized like I didn't really need to do that. Obviously I let his comment get to me a little bit because then I start to feel protective. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's no longer just me that I'm worried about. Like I want to make sure I'm doing something good, you know, for my kid as well. Of course. Yeah. It's that mom guilt already. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was getting so many opinions in the beginning and everyone has a different opinion, even people who I trust, people who are not trolls on the internet, who also, you know, we don't trust at all. But like (laughs) my acupuncturist, she's very into meat and she's also Mm -hmm. pregnant and, you know, she was giving me books and stuff. So I was open and learning, especially in the first trimester. But you just know what works for your body. Yeah. Everyone's different. Bio-individuality is such totally. a real thing. And then I started talking to all of these women who I know who are plant-based, who have babies, who had these amazing, healthy plant-based pregnancies and just getting that reassurance. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I knew this was what felt good for my body. I just think our bodies always know. It yeah. goes back to that intuitive intuition, like mm-hmm. you said, intuitive eating and definitely feeling good. Yeah. And if you have an open relationship as well, where you're open to things and you're not being so restrictive, whatever it is, whether it is like restrictive, plant-based, keto, whatever diet you're following, and it's very restrictive and and the relationship with the food is not good, then it's going to be um, a negative result anyways, because it's causing you stress. Mm -hmm. It's like, it doesn't even really matter what you're eating. I always say like, if you're stressing all night about eating this cookie, it's better to just eat the cookie because the stress of of not doing it or whatever, you know, guilt or punishment you're putting yourself through is not 
as bad or it's it's just it's worse than than just eating the cookie and getting over getting it over with because that stress is going to cause and you know as we know inflammation and that's what causes disease it's like it's just better to yeah like you said like be open and not be restrictive and which basically means be intuitive with what you're eating and i think a lot of people when i say like don't be restrictive but they're like but you're vegan like your plant based that's the most restrictive you can be but that's restrictive to what's normal, like quote unquote, in like today's diet. And mm-hmm. I think that people get that confused where it's like, well, what are you basing normal off of, of, of what you learned in school from like the food pyramid that was funded by the dairy and meat industry? Exactly. Like, is that what you're basing it off of? Because I don't feel like I'm being restricted because it's all about mindset. Like restriction comes down to your mindset, not necessarily like if you go to a restaurant my dad would always say like, you just always pick the best case or the best um, option available. And to me, that's the opposite of being restrictive where it's like, if I go to a restaurant and restrictive to me is nothing here is good enough for me. And I'm just going to like be stressed about all night and wonder what I'm going to eat. And I've done that before, but if it's like, what's the best option for me? Okay. Let me, I'm going to, you know, I've made a promise to myself that I'm going to always pick a plant-based option. It's just, I've been doing it for so long. I would honestly feel worse if I did pick something with dairy or me at this point because my body's just not used to it. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's not what I would choose out of everything in the world to eat, but I'm not going to stress about it because again, the stress of oh, what I ate was just, you know, had a little bit too much saturated fat or whatever, like is worse than just eating it and being of done course. with it. Yeah. I'm completely with you. And my answer to that, whenever anybody says, Um, how do you eat plant-based and not feel restricted is eating plant-based has actually given me so much freedom with food. That's what, that's what makes me feel good. It gives me freedom because I feel good. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. Totally. I'm also not missing anything that I'm not getting. Yeah. Like similar to you. I've let up with myself about ingredients and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like you can get anything plant-based that yeah. you can get not plant-based, but that's just the huge, another huge myth in this world yeah. of like, it's dangerous. It's restrictive. Yeah. It's really not. It just yeah. depends on what you're choosing to eat. Totally. And it's just different than what maybe you've seen mm-hmm. and you're used to and yeah. what like is being sold to you. And different is not bad. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I think if we're just going with the mainstream all the time, there's a lot of unhealthy things yeah, going on. So for sure, <laughs> that is the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Now I want to ask you some of the rapid fires that I ask everyone Perfect. who comes on the show. Do you know your human design? I don't. And everyone's been asking me about it. I think I did look it up randomly. Like my friend was telling me about it, but, and I remember kind of, if you were to tell me the options, I might I'll tell you. Okay. okay. So there's generator, manifesting generator, manifester, projector and reflector. Oh, wait, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I want to say maybe generator. That could uh, be. Do you know what time know. you were born? I believe it was like 5.01 p.m. We could look it up like if yeah. you want to look it up. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to look it up right now? Yeah, let's okay, do it. Let's do it. Well, let the me make sure. Let has me... to be exact. Okay, so I was going to say. You take your time and look for it. My audience is probably laughing at this point because the last multiple guests I've had on are like, oh, I'm not really sure what it is. I'm like, oh, we'll <laughs> we just look it up out. right now. Yeah. Let's go. We're looking up Don't here now. It. It's so, it's so fun for me. That's funny. I know. Let me okay, see. Okay, so I'll start in putting your info. What, um, what year? Were you born? 95. 95. You're a baby. Yeah. <laughs> 95. I was born in 1990. Oh, nice. Wait, why am I not seeing? Oh, there we go. Okay. And then month? April. And then the day? 18th. Good day. I have so many friends who are Aries. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Wait, did you say the day? Well, I got the day and oh, then okay. time when you have it. Okay. And location. I want to say, let me see. I know my mom texted it to me. Okay. 524 PM. Okay. 524 PM. Okay. So military time, that would be. Do you need to know where? 24. Um, Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, I'm, thinking, I'm so bad at that. It's just 12 plus. Let's see here. <laughs> plus five. Yeah. 12, wait, what, what is wrong with me? Wait, 1724. 
I I <laughs> cannot. I think it's a pregnancy thing. I actually can't use my brain. <laughs> so no, same. Did you say five twenty four p.m.? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're just gonna do this. I'm just typing in to, into Google um, military time. It is. Oh come on, seventeen hundred. So okay. yeah, <laughs> seventeen twenty four, and then location. Um, Santa Clara, California. Oh, nice. You were born in California. Yeah. Only lived there for like a year and a half. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's see your chart. You are a generator. Okay. You're I was right. right. Life force energy. You guys are the life force of the world, basically. Okay. I that's mean, good. My husband's a generator and I always tell him the world was built for generators. You guys, um, just the way that you use your energy and spend energy with other people is, is good for, you know, being in this world okay. where like, I'm a reflector. We are like the opposite. We need so much downtime and your chart here is like, see, oh, there's how oh, I was going to say, yay. <laughs> um, all the colors here. So a reflector's chart is just completely open. We have oh. no colors. So if we were to do like a full reading on your chart, all of this means something. Oh my all gosh, it looks gates, complex. All of the numbers, all of the colors. It is complex. And <laughs> my friend is an amazing human design chart reader. So this is her website, but you oh, are wow. sacral authority, which means to make decisions, you listen to your gut. Okay. Uh, I would have to agree. I mean, I like always with these things, I'm like, yes, that's me. Well, always. When <laughs> yeah. you said the color thing, I'm like, oh my God, yes. Yeah. Another thing for me I to know. immediately look into. I love it. Your digestion is hot food. As in like, that's good for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I would say so. Environment, mountains, places where you can get perspective, wherever you feel like is conducive for you to get clarity and information. Interesting. Yeah. I can send you this love so you it. can yeah, look into it, it later. Me. I want to read it because everyone is like, do you know your human design? I'm like, I think I saw it one time, but. Now you know, you are yeah. a three, five generator. Okay. Good I think that's know. exactly what my husband is too. Really? Um, yes. And then do you know your son, rising and moon signs yes i think i'm oh wait yeah so i'm aries and then i'm a sagittarius moon actually and oh, then cool. i'm a libra rising oh nice yeah what are you i'm a libra sun okay cancer moon aquarius rising okay i mm-hmm. i don't know that much about like the zodiac signs as much as other people do but the reason I asked my mom for my time of birth and have that information <laughs> is because I was looking at my of moon course. and like yes. um, rising signs because it was so interesting to me. I'm like, oh, there's more than just my sun sign. Okay, let's get into oh, it. It's so fun. Yeah. It is. I'm obsessed with yeah. astrology and human design. Yeah. It all goes so well together. That's cool. Yeah. Are you a morning person or a night person? I'm definitely a morning person. That morning time is later when I'm pregnant, <laughs> I've learned. I'll try to get up early, but I just end up taking a nap again, mm-hmm. like at like 10. So I'm yeah, like, what I is the point? Can't. Um, but this I'm is definitely such a morning time person. to embrace rest. Yes. Morning person. Yeah. Are you a coffee person or tea? I love matcha. I don't love like a lot of other teas because I never really got into them. So... I also never really got super into coffee either. I didn't really drink like caffeine growing up, but matcha is my favorite. And then like, I do love a good, um, you know, latte every once in a while. So Mm -hmm. I I guess I'm kind of both. Good choice. Dream vacation. Dream vacation. Well, I always wanted to go to Hawaii. Like that was my ultimate dream. And then I just went and it was so amazing. I definitely want to go back ASAP because it was just beautiful. But because I'm friends with JC and she's traveled so many places, I feel like I have like my own personal travel guide. Um, she loves Bali, always talks about Bali, but I also really want to go to Italy because that's where my family's from. So I've always wanted to like kind of go see where, you know, my heritage is from. Yeah. Those are some really good choices. Yeah. Bali is the best. Yes. I miss it so much. I know. It looks amazing. Yes. And then we were both in Hawaii at the same time. And yeah. again, I was thinking she's on her baby moon at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> she's in Hawaii. Like Seriously. I'm so excited to just have such a kindred spirit yes. on this journey. We're aligned. It's so cool. Um, let's see here. What is your favorite workout? Usually you know, it kind of changes, but I've realized I like calm exercises for the most part. 
So I love hot yoga. Like that would be, if I could do that every single day, I would. Do you miss it pregnant? Yes. I miss it so For sure. Much. I know. My husband just went to a class. Like we just moved to a new place and there's a re- like, apparently a really good yoga place across from us. And he's like, as soon as I left to come here, he's like, I'm going to go try out the hot yoga. I'm, like, I'm so jealous. Oh, so jealous too. Um, but I also just love walking. I love like, but I also love sports. So I love playing like tennis or pickleball. Um, being outside and just like, ha- again, it goes back to the having fun, anything that kind of makes me have fun. But then I, I, I think yoga is just like so special to me because it's uh, a mental workout as well. Mm-hmm. Like it's really good for my soul as well as my body. I feel like um, I just like, I'm so happy when I'm doing yoga every day. Absolutely. It's so good for your mind, yeah. mind, body, and soul. If you were a color, we might know the answer to this yeah. question. What color would <laughs> yeah. you be? Yellow? Uh, I think... I do love yellow, but I, I think probably blue or green. Those are the colors I'm like most attracted yeah. to. Yeah. No, I know in all of your podcast stuff, yeah. you're blue and JC's <laughs> pink. Know. So that makes sense. Yeah. But then your personality color might be yellow, yeah. depending on that um, true. test. Someone told me my aura is orange. Orange is not my favorite color, but uh, I'll take it. Yeah, an orange it's a happy aura color. is like creativity. Oh, really? Um, I don't know aligns, anything about those either. But. Let me see here. It aligns with the, when I'm not pregnant, I know what chakra it aligns with. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> looking it up. Yeah. It's um, the sacral chakra and you're a okay. sacral authority in human design. Oh. How you make decisions. Okay, well, that would make sense. There so whoever go. told you that is probably right. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know, like if you can see those from social media, but someone DM me, they're like, mm-hmm. well, because like, th- they asked me that question on my Instagram stories and I like, what color was your personality? I was like, maybe green or blue. And she was like, your aura is orange. And I was like, okay. Some people (laughs) have that gift. Yeah. They really do. And if you could meet anyone, who would you want to meet? Oh, that's a hard one. I would love to meet like dead or alive. I think I would love to meet some of my ancestors. Like, I think that would be so cool to talk to like, you know, people from a different time period, more so than even someone who lives at my own time period and you know was a celebrity I mean I would love to meet like Kim Kardashian people like that because I just love them but I think even more so I would love to meet like some of my ancestors Mm -hmm. such a good answer I think when JC was on she said Kim Kardashian (laughs) and I've said that before too so do I yeah definitely not a Kardashian hater yeah over here they have accomplished so much yeah and then where can everyone find you so I'm on Instagram at Chelsea Jade Curtis and Chelsea is with an E-Y. And I'm also Chelsea Jade Curtis on YouTube and TikTok. And then our podcast is the What We Said podcast. Um, on Instagram, it's What We Said podcast. You can look it up on anywhere you listen to uh, podcasts. And yeah. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm so happy we got to do this. I'm yeah. so happy, especially that we got to do it in person. Yeah. There's just such a magic in person. Definitely. I agree. I yeah. love doing podcasts in person. Yeah, for sure. That was like my rule forever. I would not yeah. do them on Same. Zoom. That's how we were as And well. then with the world, I started doing them more, but in person, there's just such yeah. a magic. If you can do it in person, it's... yeah. Exactly. Yay. Well, everybody go check out Chelsea and stay tuned for all her pregnancy content and <laughs> the baby. We're both yeah, having boys, by I the know. way. Oh my God. It's I'm so, so excited exciting. to be a boy mom. I know. Same. Like I said, I grew up with brothers. So I feel like I'm like more comfortable with, because I had little brothers and older brothers. So like when I was growing up, and then I also tell my sister, we always joke that we're more brothers than we are sisters. Like we do more because we just grew up with all these boys. Uh-huh. So when I found out I was having a boy, I'm like, I feel a little bit more prepared for this yeah. <laughs> than if I was having a girl, but I, I would love you. I feel either. similarly, yeah. just like interest wise. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a very feminine person, yeah. but I don't know. I just, I also knew that I was having a boy. I don't know if really? you felt that way. I just kind of felt even before I was pregnant, I always really? felt like I would have a boy first. And then when I got pregnant, I knew it was a boy energy really? and my husband had dreams that it was a boy. Yeah. And I just knew for certain it was a boy. Yeah. Um, so when we did our, like, you know, my parents did a gender reveal for us. Yeah. Um, it just made sense. Yeah. That's so funny. Mm-hmm. We had, um, when we found out as well. So I, I felt like it was a boy at first, but I also was like, I don't want to get my heart set on it because then I will never trust my intuition again if I'm wrong. For so sure. I was like kind of open. And then all the like wives tales were telling me it was a girl, like the Chinese calendar, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Everything was saying it was a girl. I was like, well, maybe it is a girl. And then my husband and I both had a dream the same night that it was a boy, like a couple weeks before we went and did our like ultra or our anatomy scan. 
I mean, he never remembers his dreams. And he came out and he was like, I had the craziest dream last night that like I saw our son and he was like one years old. And I was like, you're not going to believe this. I had a dream that we went to the doctor and found out that it was a boy. And we were like, we both just like, we're kind of shocked and we're like, it's a boy. There's just yes. no way. But then still, even after that, I was like, keep your mind open because again, if it's a girl, you'll never trust your guy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I totally get that. I yeah. mean, I knew it was a boy. And when we were in the middle of this scavenger hunt and my parents set up for us yeah, to find fun. the gender, it was so fun. Yeah. I, in the middle of it, I was like, it's a girl. Like that's what I started <laughs> yeah. thinking. Cause I was like, no, there's no yourself. way that I've been right this yeah. whole time. And my parents, I could tell they were trying to throw us off in a way yes. and it felt like my dad was trying to throw me into thinking it was a boy so mm-hmm. I was like it's probably a girl totally it's just a crazy thing yeah. when it's 50 50 like that like your intuition can be so spot on but you yeah. can also be surprised exactly and mm-hmm. I've had a lot of people who have felt the same way they're like mm-hmm. I totally thought it was a boy and then it was a girl so I was like okay maybe I'm just you know yeah it's really interesting mm-hmm. from afar um I thought you were having a girl before you found out or oh, really? before you shared. Yeah. Because um, from what you've shared, our yeah. symptoms have been quite different. Oh, and I really? knew I was having a See, boy. That's what everyone said. And told I started me too. thinking, oh, shit, seems like girl symptoms. Yeah. I have friends who are pregnant with a girl who have been extremely nauseous. Yeah. Which, knock on wood, I haven't had a lot of. I've had oh, everything good. else. I've had yeah. food aversions, <laughs> everything. But like, you the know what? Actual- the har- I saw like your heartburn. Um, remedies mm-hmm, or whatever mm-hmm. and I was like that almost is worse sometimes the nausea don't get me wrong it's horrible and I would like even like seeing photos of when I was sick I'm like I can't even look at it because it makes me nauseous but the heartburn and like the um acid reflux is so just not fun it's horrible <laughs> yeah that is like a newer symptom for me so yeah. that's why I say like I didn't have nausea in the beginning mm-hmm. um well I did but it was it was I wasn't like throwing up yeah the heartburn holy shit yeah. I have <laughs> yeah I've been awake this entire week which is why I actually feel so not like myself in yeah. this moment which is fine it's just part of yeah. being pregnant totally um, it's like fire in your whole yeah. esophagus and your throat yeah and it's what I tell my night. husband mm-hmm. I'm like it feels like someone lit a campfire in my stomach mm-hmm. and it's just like the smoke is like my esophagus is the chimney yeah that's what it feels like (laughs) and then there's like there's no chance of sleeping when you feel that way you can't fall asleep like that and you have to kind of try to fall asleep sitting up which is just you know not comfortable at all no so I've been trying to adjust and eat an earlier dinner that was like a huge tip from people online eat an earlier dinner it's the opposite of how I used to be I used to be like three meals I was not a snacker yeah. dinner was my biggest meal by Same. far it was like a feast mm-hmm. it's just not like that anymore I know so many things change man it's so crazy I I, I feel the same way it's because also I would look up nausea symptoms and like um what to do for nausea and I'd be like have ginger have peppermint eat right before you go to bed and eat right when you wake up and then I was also having really bad acid reflux and heartburn at the same time and it was like the complete opposite it was like do not have ginger do not have peppermint it's <gasps> yeah. the worst thing chocolate like basically anything it's like tomato sauce I'm like I, I can't eat anything I know and then it would be like eat three hours before you go to bed and don't eat like right when you wake up either and so I'd be like <laughs> okay sh- should I try and fix the nausea or try and fix the heartburn which one is like worse for me right now you're right it's totally the opposite yeah it's hard. Yeah, yeah. I've been avoiding tomatoes, citrus, oh, spicy so food. Sad because I, love I know, <laughs> I know. I miss it too. I think it's like in moderation, you totally. know, fine. But it is definitely. I've actually had the worst experience with Mexican food, which is sad. Yeah. I you love know what? Mexican I had this food. amazing curry in Hawaii, but it was so spicy. And it was like the instant I took a bite, I was like, that was mm-hmm. the bad decision. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's done for. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, the rest of the night I will feel terrible, but it was good. <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes you just have to do it anyway, yeah. especially on vacation. Totally. it's like, they're not your usual options. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, it's yes. been quite the journey. Well, I'm so excited for our little boys to come. I know. In December. It's going to come so soon. I know. It's really only like what 13 14 weeks away yeah it's crazy I know mind-blowing it's gonna fly by I know well I'm so excited for you and I'm so happy that we did this I know same thank you for having me yes thank you 
Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode with Chelsea Curtis. This was such a fun conversation. It really just felt like chatting with a friend. And I hope that you gained a lot of insight and value about pregnancy, starting a podcast, cultivating more confidence, just being who you are. I always love having a conversation with a fellow podcaster because Chelsea is so good at just keeping the conversation going, keeping it conversational, asking me questions in return. And I was really interested to hear about her journey to becoming a plant-based health coach and helping women and helping people heal from disordered eating. It's incredible work that she does. And you guys will love her podcast if you haven't listened to it before. So check her out on Instagram, Chelsea Jade Curtis. If you liked this episode, it would be such an honor to me if you could rate and review the show on iTunes. So I always say iTunes, but what I really mean is Apple. <laughs> rate it on Apple. Send me a screenshot to jordanatthebalancewoman.com so I can thank you by sending you my free yoga ebook. Thank you also to our sponsors for this show, Sakara and Cured Nutrition. You can find the links to those specific brands in the show notes. And next week is my birthday. So I think if I can get it together before then, I'm going to record a special birthday episode that you guys can look forward to. And happy birthday to all my fellow Libras in Libra season. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here and we'll talk soon. 